Let's focus on the rally that we've been seeing in China and get right to the China automakers. In fact, we're seeing some really good third quarter delivery numbers. And for that, we welcome in our next guest, Caleb Silvers with us, editor-in-chief at Investopedia. And I want to hear what you're going to say about the Chinese automakers, but I know you're following investor sentiment at the same time. And we, we are in a minute-to-minute -minute market, but September was a winning month. What, what are some of the things you're hearing, Caleb? Yeah, we just came out with the latest results of our bi-monthly investor sentiment survey. How are you feeling? Bullish, bearish? What are you afraid of? What are you buying? What would you do with an extra 10 grand? Nicole, they're as bullish as they've been all year. More than 70% say they're either optimistic or cautiously optimistic. Less than 20% are skeptical, a little too much optimism um, than we're used to here. Only 19% expecting a correction in the stock market through the rest of the year. And what are they leaning into? They're leaning into ETFs. This is a stock buying crowd. The fact that they're leaning into ETFs tells us they like the rally that we've experienced so far. They'd like to be a little bit more diversified, more balanced going into the rest of the year because we've seen some big gains in some big stocks, but we've also seen a big sell-off in a lot of those. That volatility may be too much going in to the uncertainty about the election. I mean, we're already up 20 percent. Are you and not entertained? Think, and, they, and they just feel like uh, up, up, and away. It's amazing, or at least cautiously optimistic or optimistic, sure. but less so on the skepticism. Pretty interesting there. Yeah, I mean, lower rates will help you feel that way, plus higher highs. And we've had a lot of higher highs this year, not yeah. just for the S&P 500. Yeah. The Dow actually 33 uh, all-time highs so far this year. So when you get that momentum, when you get that trend, yeah. and you know rates are going lower and earnings look pretty strong, what's not to like, especially when you're going to get less money out of the bank going forward? All right. Now we turn our attention to EV makers, including Tesla, by the way. But we're looking at a lot of the Chinese electric vehicle companies. And some of these deliveries were pretty great. Um, interested to hear more about that. Which ones jumped out at you? Yeah, you got to look at Li. You got to look at NIO and Xpeng, but also BYD. All the stocks are taking off like all Chinese stocks in the past five to six days. But deliveries worldwide, much better than expected and much better than they've been over the past several months, except for Europe. Let's talk about Europe in a second. But when you look at the the fact that a lot of these makers, especially the EV makers, the battery powered makers, they're doing a lot better because of a tariff uh, situation in Europe that's kind of hindering sales there. But good deliveries across the boards from a lot of these companies, even Tesla doing well in the Chinese market and doing well in the European market as well. Yeah, I, I was looking at Lee reporting the delivery figures. They were the first to report on Monday night, delivering 50 um, in the U.S. It delivered 53.7 thousand vehicles in September and that was up from the year ago number of 36,000. So for the quarter, it was up about 45 um, percent. Pretty interesting to see. I mean, these are some significant gains. I mean, I know China's been doing stimulus, lowering rates, um, a lot of measures to boost the economy. But some of these numbers, I mean, there's Lee, look, up 50, almost 50 percent year over year. That's and you a see, lot. You see it in the stocks. Look at the stock shares of Xpeng. It's up 17 percent in the past five days, like the rest of China. 63 yeah. percent so far far this year. You could not say that about most of the Chinese market, but Xpeng doing very well there. And then uh, Neo up 30 percent year to date as a stock. So deliveries are rising, right? And also you've got the fact that uh, battery powered EVs are selling a little bit better, especially in Europe, but especially in the United States as well. Very key for these companies. And automakers in general have not had an easy time selling cars without significant discounts. They've had to discount and add some rebates onto some of these vehicles, but it is driving volume and unit sales. And for these younger EV makers, especially out of China, they need volume sales. They need unit sales to actually prove that they're going to be around for a while. Two investors so far in the last couple of months, that's happening. Yeah, and what's interesting, too, is we think about Tesla, and we're waiting on the robo-taxi event on the 10th, right, 10-10, um, then followed by the earnings. But overall, deliveries for Tesla were good news. Um, but people are really, you know, sort of getting all hopped up for the 10-10 event. Um, some of your thoughts there on that one? Yeah. I mean, Tesla's a hype stock, and those that love it, love it, and will hold yeah. it and want to buy it into some of these events. Look at the Cybertruck. It was a major announcement. It failed, and we saw it coming again, and it was a big announcement. And the stock kind of volatile in and around that and in and around the actions of the CEO, Elon Musk. So you might get some hype going into it, but the believers are the believers in Tesla. If you've been able to hang in there for the last 10 years, you've done very well. But expect some volatility in these big events. 
they're showcase moments for the company. It's kind of a showcase type of company. Wouldn't be surprised right. to see a little rally there, but then a little petering off. Uh, I got to tell you, though, I mean, I'm still keeping an eye on BYD, which has been a name that people, everybody was watching. Buffett actually liked BYD. So and this, this is they a, own big a big position. There. And, and in fact, you know, this name um, sold. 417,000.6 new energy passenger vehicles in September. That jump was 46% from last year. But the big picture here, it's it's popular. It has a plug-in hybrid. It is a stellar competitor to Tesla. In fact, overtook Tesla. Yeah, in fact, right? if, you, if you go around Asia, you mostly yeah. see BYD cars, and you see a lot more of those in Europe. We don't see many here in the United States, but it has definitely got a foothold in its home market, and it's got one of the richest investors in the yeah. world behind it in the name of Warren Buffett, who Loves yeah. That company. yeah, it was a fourth quarter where BYD took over Tesla, and then um, Tesla took back the crown in the first quarter. Has been holding it for now, but they are definitely neck and neck in the big picture. I mean, when we think about what's going on here in the world of um, electrification, data centers for AI. It's going to be a whole new world for electric demand because we talk about that these kinds of cars need to plug in. Absolutely. Um, and the U.S. grid, not ready. Not ready, not for, ready that, for that. Even we though there were a lot of promises right? made in the, in the Inflation Reduction Act, which is really a climate bill in disguise. But you got to watch Europe very closely on this. This is a key market for a lot of these automakers, and sales fell 48% in Europe. They did well in other parts of the developed world, not in Europe because Europe has provisional tariffs on companies that are EV imports that are not battery powered. So they have regulations that are, that are very tough. European automakers would like Brussels to loosen those. I'm sure Chinese automakers would like to see that as well. We've seen those Euro those Chinese EV makers have a really rough time in the European continent. Yeah. I expect that to continue as well. I mean, you mentioned some of the U.S. automakers. We know Ford and GM have been sort of pulling back or being more selective on how they're going to produce. Uh, they've cut back on some of the production of EVs. Uh, you've had Volkswagen and Mercedes-Benz just talk about China falling sales. So it's a very, very temp temperamental group. BYD actually had some recalls, nearly 100,000 recalls for a potential fire. That was yesterday Day, but still a winner week to date, still up 5%, and um, year to date, 35%. So that's the big picture, but sort of impressive. I mean, some of these are record numbers. Final thoughts? Yeah, record numbers, but coming off of low bases. So the jumps yeah. are big, and they seem like big headline numbers. At the end of the day, market share is pretty small, still penetration, still pretty small here. These companies have a long way to go before they are mass market vehicles, and then get profitable. We've seen what happened to the legacy U.S. automakers. It took them a very long time to catch theirs, their rhythm. We'll see what happens with these automakers as well. But Europe's a key market to watch. Yeah, and the European automakers, well, there was one article that said European automakers don't have a response to the Chinese EV offensive. Um, so they're sort of clawing their way back to, I mentioned Volkswagen. Yeah, better example. margins in China, cheaper product though. Yeah, yeah. Caleb, good to see good you. And thank you for the news on the sentiment, how people are feeling so bullish. Careful, invest wisely. Caleb Silver, Investopedia, thank you for joining us.